Vladimir Putin's self-defeating strategy. CNN, the war against Ukraine is only a few days old, but already Russian President Vladimir Putin has amassed a stunning series of historic achievements, all of them precisely the opposite of what he might have hoped to accomplish. The conflict is still raging, and Putin may yet turn the tide of the invasion in which his forces have struggled. But much of the damage he has done to his cause, much of what he has done to clarify the principles of democracy, self-determination, and global sol solidarity, and to strengthen the very ideas, organizations, and the countries. Putin tried to decade to undermine will carry on in regardless of his invasion's ultimate outcome. From the United States to NATO to the European Union, Russia's unprovoked assault on its neighbor sparked unqualified, unqualified reversion, defended only by the smattering of autocrats with even some of them hesitating to give his full support to the attack. Putin gave the world a rare moment of moral clarity. The crisis he created presented us with the real-life dangers of unrestrained autocracy and the very tangle, tangible demonstration of the importance of democracy, freedom, and self-determination. Right, that are so often seen as lofty, ethereal ether concepts suddenly became palpable when Putin tries to steal them from the Ukrainian people. And Putin's assert gave a renewed sense of mission to organizations whose stated mission is to preserve peace, security, and democracy. In the United States, which has suffered in recent years from the dangerous virus of political polarization aggregated, ag aggravated by Moscow's interference, Russia's attack created an un uncommon upswelling of near un un unanimity. A CNN poll found upward of 80% of Americans backing sanctions to punish and pressure Russia with equal majorities of Democrats and Republicans aligned to say the U.S. should do even more. The sentiment was replicated around the world with mass demonstrations and concrete measures taken not just by government but by private companies. Major corporations have decided to take a principled stance even at high financial cost. At the United, United Nations General Assembly, representatives of 193 countries gathered for an emergency session, the first of its kind in 40 years to debate a resolution deploring, deploring Russia's unprovoked armed aggression. The UNGA's President Abdullah Shahid of the Maldives called the body the collective cons cons conscience of humanity. And the humanity spoke, speaker after speaker, rose to condemn Russia's aggression. Just a few dared defend it. Even China, one of Putin's only allies, called, called it for respecting international borders. Ukraine's envoy Sergei, Sergei Kislycha warned, if Ukraine does not survive, international peace will not survive. If Ukraine does not survive, we cannot be surprised if democracy fail, fails next. Canada's ambassador Bob Ray, who, like dozens of his peers, de decried Russia's actions, addressed the Russian people, telling those who have dared to challenge Putin with anti-war protest, we, we see you and you, we hear you. We see you and we hear you. 
and telling the Russians that their president, who has caused this crisis, so sorely miscalculated by ignoring the democratic spirit of the Russian people. It was the reminder of how this disaster could append Putin's hold of his own country. Russia's representatives repeated the first pretext for this war, claiming Russia is only defending itself from Ukraine's threat. Putin's war has turned the Ukrainian people's courageous defense of their independence and their democratic choices into an inspiration for the rest of the world. By attacking and claiming they're not a real nation, he's stalked Ukraine's sense of nationhood and patriotism. If Putin expected the West to be divided, NATO to stumble, the European Union to be paralyzed, he must be as surprised as the rest, rest of the world by the global resolve he ignited. NATO had been disparaged as absolute and brain dead, but Putin has infused it with new purpose. Its most hesitant members, the ones closest to Moscow until now, have thrown their full support to reg resisting and countering Putin's aggression. Turkey is blocking access to the Mediterranean from the Black Sea to warships, including from the Russian Navy. Germany, most at risk from losing Russia fuel, seems transformed. After multiple U.S. presidents tries to pressure Berlin to raise its defense spending to the 2% of GDP required, required by NATO rules, it was Putin who made it happen. Councilor Olaf Scholz declared February 24, 2022 marks a historic turning point, referring to the date of the invasion. He announced that Germany will immediately, immediately raise defense spending above 2% and speed development on non-Russian gas alternatives. Eastern European autocrats, including Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban, a favorite of right-wing provocators, and the Czech Republic's President Milos Zeman, disparaged by his critics as the servant of the Kremlin, expressed their alarm and revulsion, revulsion at Putin's actions. Jiman declared it necessary to isolate a lunatic. Orban, whose link to the EU have frayed in recent years, was unequivocal. Together with our European Union and NATO allies, he said, we condemn Russia. Putin managed to remind everyone, especially his neighbors, about, they, about why they joined NATO. For people everywhere, but especially in countries that are, were once dominated by the Kremlin, it was an unsettled. Un Settled, unsettling reminder that they, their freedoms are not guaranteed. In the process, Putin has branded himself as the global outlaw, possibly a war criminal. More clarity is always useful. In the past, Putin has been, has been able to overcome Western sanctions by countering on the greed of Western invest, investors. But the private sector found his actions just as abhorrent. It's now often one sees private firms dri driven, driven by profit, for foregoing billions of dollars to take to take a moral stand. Putin likely expected his military would secure a quick victory that Russia would cost over a wave of sanctions by exploiting, exploiting divisions in the West, investor greed and support from other autocrats. Russians are already pay, 
obtain the price for his dismissive calculation. As his forces push against the Ukraine that is more united than ever, the world east and west has been reawakened to civilization's fundamental values. Putin has reminded everyone that national borders should be sacrosanct, and that everything we can take for granted, not just our freedoms, but the basic assumption that when we wake up in the morning, our world will not have been turned upside down by the whims of the dictator, depends on respect for the principles that must be defended. The resolve of the international community of the people of the world will be tested if this conflict continues much longer and especially if Putin succeeds. Success. The sanctions against Russia, the obstacles on its export, and it all may amount to new hardship on the people who now support Ukraine's struggle and oppose its aggression. The coming days, weeks, and months may well challenge everyone's determination and strength of character. For now, Ukraine is doing the heavy lifting. But the vast majority of the world is standing in solidarity, understanding that Ukraine fight is everyone's. That's quite an accomplishment for Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Not one he hoped to achieve.